Hello. Yep. Uh, hello everyone. We are in the stage two of the. Hello. Yeah. Uh, we are in the stage of the, uh, stage two of the API Days virtual conference. Now I'm Eric No. I'm one of the MC of this stage today. Uh, welcome all of you guys to attend this stage for architecting API track. Uh, before the lunch break, we will have four great talks on different topics coming up for our track. Yeah, in Hong Kong time zone, actually. Yeah, for before the lunch break. Yeah, in general, we will have uh, a, a sharing from the uh, guest presenter, and we will have also a Q&A session after that. Uh, all of the uh, attendees can feel free to ask any questions in the stage chat. And of course, I can help you guys to ask the presenter or ask the guest to answer your question after the, in the Q&A session. Uh, first, we will have uh, Keith, Keith Chen, uh, who is the principal solution architect at WeBank, uh, who's going to give us a talk on how to use federated learning to achieve security, privacy preserving joint API model building in production. Hello. Hello, hello everybody. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's your time right now for sharing everything that you want to, to show us. Okay, cool. So uh, my name is Kai Chen. I'm the principal solution architect from uh, WeBank. Actually, uh, I'm in the division uh, focused on technology business uh, for the international market. So today, uh, the topic from the API day is more on how to use API to build an ecosystem. And this year, I was saying that API day, they focus more on the uh, data interchange or how to uh, leverage the data in different party to, to, to see explore more business. So uh, today I want to share uh, our use cases uh, in WeBand. So how to use uh, one of the technology we call federal learning to achieve a secure privacy preserving uh, uh, joint AI model building in a production environment. So before I go into the topic, um, if uh, you don't know uh, who is WeBand, actually WeBand is a digital first uh, 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 China a digital bank. So uh, we are the first digital bank in China founded in uh, 214. And uh, our bank uh, uh, is pure digital, so we rely on a lot of technology and innovation. So uh, we are driven by technology, and uh, we are over 56% of our, our staff is uh, focused on uh, development uh, IT. And right now, uh, this year, we have uh, more than uh, 270 uh, million uh, co uh, consumer uh, uh, customer, and as well 1.8 million uh, SME customer. And all our customer is uh engage us for a digital channel. So we we as a digital bank we don't have uh, uh physical branches. So we rely on technology to do all this, and we have a peak uh, daily transaction talking about over uh, uh seven hundred fifty million. And to support uh all this uh, uh high transaction or pure digital uh banking environment, we have to uh, uh leverage a lot of our technology. So uh, we talk about uh over. 30% of our investment in IT. And we focus on uh, stability, agility. So our, our technology right now is a uh, distributed architecture and 100% in-house design. And we, with this uh, uh, architecture, with this uh, in-house design technology, we can achieve a cost advantage in, uh, in our operation. We talk about uh, our account uh, for our customer, the maintenance is, uh, below three uh, revenue uh, a year. And our product development, we're talking about 10 days. Uh, during the COVID uh, situation, we, we, we have a new financial product to support those SME, and we have a new product to, to roll out uh, within uh, 10 days time. So this is our track record. With our technology, we can achieve a very agile uh, product development. And we uh, actually in uh, 2019, we have the top one bank in payment application over the world. So uh, in, within China, we're also the first uh, band to receive the National High Tech Firm uh, certification. So with all this uh, leading technology capability, we're setting the bar for the bank uh, industry and with the FinTech uh, uh, environment. So uh, within our bank, uh, we have two flagship products. The first one is our uh, consumer node. And this is our, uh, our product for the uh, underband or unbanned. So uh, with this product, we are the first uh, mobile only uh, uh, microloan for the mass market. 
And within this product, we leverage a lot of uh, AI technology to to do the credit score because though uh, uh, the people to, uh, apply this uh, consumer loan, uh, they may not have a, a, a credit record in the credit bureau. So we uh, leverage uh, some of the alternate data from the uh, internet uh, company or other other source uh, to to build the credit worthiness of those uh, uh, consumer loan. So uh, with this uh, AI technology, we can uh, achieve uh, below five second time to determine the credit line for the uh, applicant. And also we can uh, achieve less than one minute for, for, the, for the consumer to, to receive the fund in the R time. So uh, it's a very simple con consumption loan and it's a daily uh, interest accrual uh, with a very flexible repayment uh, schedule for the customer. So uh, it's a risk-based pricing, leverage the federal learning technology that I will share uh, later on. Another uh, flagship product we have between the bank is uh, uh, our uh, product for the SME banking is a Wei Dai. Actually, this is a product for the uh, B2B. So this product, uh, we talk about the, the credit line is uh, uh, dynamically adjustable, uh, or, uh, maximum of 3 million RMB, and it's purely online papers uh, kind of uh, application. And this uh, product also rely on, the, on our AI technology to, to do the credit rating. So uh, later on, we'll share how we can leverage our technology to do uh, a joint AI model without the issue of the data privacy. Okay, so with our own technology, we have uh, four pillars. We call ABCD a, with the artificial intelligence, we have blockchain, we have cloud computing, we have big data technology. And all this uh, technology, we, we believe uh, open connectivity, collaboration, so that uh, everybody can enjoy uh, the, the the, the technology that uh, they can adopt easily. So all this uh, technology, we, we have open source project. So for the technology I'm going to share today, uh, we call FAVE, is a federated AI technology enabler. This is open source uh, technology. So uh, with this technology, uh, people can build uh, joint AI model with the federal learning and without the issue of data privacy, without the issues of the uh, leaking any uh, uh, personal information through, through the internet. So, but uh, you may ask question now, uh, why uh, federal learning? Why uh, we just using open API or in the Hong Kong, uh, they will have a, a, a commercial data interchange uh, kind of concept or infrastructure. Why we have to uh, use federal learning? I was saying that for open API for uh, uh, CDI, they have a platform for people to exchange the data, but how to build a AI model? To build AI model, uh, people definitely have a lot of data to to train the model, to validate the model before they do the online inferencing or to do the prediction. So in a traditional way, uh, people can buy data, but it's illegal. They can use uh, decentralized data, but I was saying that using uh, anonymous data or decentralized data is ineffective to, to do the collaboration. And if just using uh, other method or using the different result and they combine the result is also not that accuracy. So for the current charge, we're seeing that uh, if a bank they want to use the data in internet, uh, like uh, the buying behavior, the consumption behavior. They can have a good way to do the co collaboration or for bank to have alternate data to do credit score from, let's say, uh, payment or online shopping mall. Uh, it's, not, it's very difficult. So the bank, they just uh, use the traditional way to use a credit report or their own transaction history to do the credit rating. And for enterprise, we, we saw some enterprise even within the same uh, group, they have different departments. Some of the data they can't share. So if the uh, enterprise, they want to build uh, uh, AI uh, using the data from different departments, they also issue of the privacy. So uh, that's why uh, there's a limitation of the traditional uh, machine learning. They have to have all the data in a central pay to do the uh, model training, validation, and inferencing. So with uh, federal learning, is a machine learning framework to help uh, multiple organizations that can collaborate and using data to build a model, but without sacrificing the user privacy and security rules. Uh, as you saw in the uh, diagram in the middle, so uh, different company or organization, they just uh, exchange uh, encrypted uh, model training parameters. 
they don't share any confidential information to do the machine learning or do the uh, model training. So they can achieve uh, distributed model training. And at the same time, uh, they can leverage all the data to, to, to improve the uh, model accuracy. So this is a wonderful model to do a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, machine learning in a federated learning uh, fashion. And in the diagram at the right-hand side, you can see also there will, there will be a collaborator that can coordinate the, the exchange of the, uh, the public key or what the intermediate result and all the uh, machine learning, uh, the gradient, the loss to, to do the uh, federated learning. So for this kind of model, the benefit is no underlying data to be leaked to another party or leak out to the uh, public information uh, internet. And at the same time, each participant, they have the equal status. They, they own their parcel model. And the performance of the model is a, is a joint model from those uh, two parties. So it's increased accuracy and, and the data requests that they can use the alternate data to, to improve the model training. Okay. So as I said before, uh, there's a two, a scenario that a uh, company can adopt this kind of federated uh, learning scenario. The one is uh, a big company. They have different department or they have uh, different subsidiary. They want to have uh, 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 data from all those uh, department or subsidiary to, to join a uh, federated learning uh, platform to do the model training. As a sample, maybe a very large uh, uh, cognitive, they have uh, different uh, subsidiary, let's say uh, telco, they have uh, insurance, those two organizations, they want to uh, leverage the data to, to build a joint model for precision marketing. And the organization, they can use this uh, federated big data platform to do the joint modeling. And on the right hand side is a talking about a federated learning that we're talking about uh, different business partner or data provider or requester, they can join a network. And then through the network, let's say at WeBank, uh, we leverage the uh, uh, data, alternate data from the internet uh, or social media. So we acquire the third party data through the network and then we can do uh, our own uh, model, uh, joint model training using the alternate data for risk management, for customized insurance offer or for other use cases. So these are uh, two scenarios that people can use uh, federal learning. So there are two categories of federal learning. One is uh, uh, horizontal, the other one is vertical. I was saying that uh, most of our use cases in production with more tools of the vertical federal learning. Uh, as a sample in WeBank, uh, we have our own uh, uh, credit score, uh, credit uh, or transaction history of a customer, but we don't have a, a payment history or a, a kind of a consumption habit of a customer outside of our data or outside our bank organization. So we acquire uh, additional feature of this data to do our model training for the uh, with scoring or for the credit worthiness or to apply or to to do a, a credit rating for customer they are applying our personal loan or SME loan. So this is our scenario that we use uh, our federal learning for our SME loan. So we bank we will be our we will be the data provider. We have the loan performance of an existing customer. We have the sample ID, but we ask a data provider in China. Actually, this case, we are a very large uh, invoice data company in China. They have a lot of invoice of the uh, SME. So we, we do a joint model training with this data provider. So uh, it could help because uh, some of the SME, they may not have a uh, credit history for particular uh, micro or very small SME. Uh, usually this uh, kind of SME, they can't apply loan uh, through a traditional bank. So due to their low income, due to their lack of credit history, but with the federal learning, we acquire additional data from the uh, invoice company so that we can do a, you know, a very uh, uh, fast way to, to have the credit worthiness of this uh, small and medium uh, enterprise using the alternative data from a, a large invoice data company in China. So in terms of data application architecture, as I said before, our uh, solution is uh, open source. So the underlying core framework is uh, open source, but uh, in WeBank, we have an uh, enterprise edition that uh, can be consumed by our uh, 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 industry. So uh, with the enterprise function, we add uh, additional uh, multi-function, web GUI function, data management function. As, as a bank, we have a, a, lot, a lot of uh, monitoring or the function that are added in our enterprise uh, edition on top of our open source uh, uh, on the GitHub. 
So with this, uh, the deployment is simple. Uh, each uh, uh, customer uh, at the left-hand side, there's a data requester. They have installed a component of our enterprise product and the data provider, as I said before, maybe is a payment site, is a social media site. Uh, those side, they, they have both our software package online and then they, they can do the uh, site management, data market management, monitoring, online serving for a master management node. And they can join uh, the model training uh, using this uh, solution architecture. And with this uh, enterprise edition, we have uh, over 20 uh, plus uh, federal learning algorithm and visualizing of the uh, model uh, learning, uh, inferencing and end-to-end -end pipeline for, for the machine learning. Actually, the, the machine learning uh, or the, the, the process is similar to a uh, traditional way, uh, but uh, it's a kind of a, a federated fashion. So two sides, they have to inject their own data and then they do a federal learning for uh, online processes. So this uh, uh, a federal learning uh, model data flow First, uh, there's a data requester, as I said before, maybe uh, WeBank is a data requester. They request uh, alternate data from a data provider, let's say the invoice company, as I mentioned before. So the first thing they do have to do a, a sample intersection. So uh, those companies, they have uh, using the same data set with the same sample ID to do the model training and the validation. So we do a, a private set intersection PSI using RSA. So we find a common uh, sample ID with the data set. And with this, uh, two party, they will have their own feature. Let's say the data requester as a VBAN, we have a, a feature X4 and X5 and the data provider, the feature X1 to X3. And with this feature, we will do a encrypted model training distributed in those sites. So the uh, raw data, they don't have to uh, uh, leave out the organization, but we will doing uh, encrypted model training. We just exchange uh, the encrypted intermediate. We call the uh, encrypted gradients or parcel model. So uh, Underlying, we use a homomorphic encryption. So uh, we can do the uh, loss function calculation in the machine and linear regression in the encrypted format. And so there's no uh, privacy information will be leaked out. And finally, after the training and the validation, the requ data requester and the provider, they will own their parcel model. So uh, both parties will, will own their uh, parameter of their attribute. Uh, the other party, they 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 won't they don't know the the attribute or the even the weight of the uh, attribute for the machine learning. So they to keep the data privacy at the same time, uh, those party the requester can extend the machine learning uh, capability with the additional feature or alternate data from the provider. Actually, this is our our uh, use cases in VBAN that. For our personal loan and our SME loan, we also leverage this uh, federal learning to acquire alternate data from uh, uh, different data provider in China. So uh, this is uh, uh, one of the technology that could help uh, uh, for data interchange. Uh, there's some of the issues there for uh, uh, lack of data for, uh, for building a better uh, machine learning model. So with FAVE, uh, our open source uh, technology, we already uh, is the founding member of the IEEE uh, standard. So we are pushing the standard of the federal learning application. And we have our uh, public, uh, we publish a book called uh, Federal Learning uh, by our uh, chief AI officer. So if you want to learn more about our federal learning technology, you can have a look at the book. And actually, uh, Hong Kong MA, the uh, Hong Kong uh, uh, organization that regulate the ban, they also have a uh, look at our technology and, and a few years ago, when they talked about the AI technology, we shipped into bank uh, using AI. They, they, they say that, hey, we bank already have the uh, federal learning cases with a uh, regulator in China to do the AML. And so we have a lot of use cases for uh, federal learning in production. So uh, tomorrow, our, uh, our principal AI uh, solution architect will talk more about the use cases. So uh, I think uh, uh, this uh all of my presentation today uh so we'll see any question from the audience yeah hi thanks hi. for hi. yeah can you hear me yeah yeah okay uh thanks for your sharing about the phrase modeling yeah one yeah. question yeah we all know that ai or machine learning with results some false positive or false negative cases 
uh, if we are part in some in some sensitive area, let's say the loan or some financial trap, do you have any suggestions to our attendee how to mitigate the impact and make it, uh, let's say, fulfill the campaigns or regulation in Hong Kong? Oh, actually, I think uh, in Hong Kong, uh, uh, the adoption of using uh, AI or using that kind of federal learning or even federal learning for alternative of credit score is quite a new concept. <laughs> Yeah. And other bands, they are very traditional rule base or decision system to do the uh, uh the the credit scoring. Actually, in WeBank also we are uh, adopted a phase approach. Uh, before federal learning, before using AI, we also have a uh, a traditional way a uh, decision system uh with the uh, credit bureau data to to approve the loan. But uh, we introduced the uh, uh federal learning because we want to uh serve more under bank or the unbanded um, uh, audience they don't have a credit history report before so we acquire alternative data but we also do the scheduling uh, with our traditional uh, system so the uh, federal learning or the ai model will, will be a sub model of our uh, whole process to approve the loan actually we uh, we, we we leverage the technology in uh, uh, not just you know a single model for the <laughs> approval we have a, a lot of sub model and before approval the loan, we have ekyc we have the you know uh, uh, AI to 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 see if it's a good guy or bad guy, and then once there's a good guy, they apply the loan, and then we we do the traditional way to do the credit scoring. But with this uh, insufficient data for the uh, traditional, you know, rule based engine, then we leverage our federal learning for alternative data to 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 do the approval or the credit worthiness of the uh, uh, applicant. So I was saying that there's a kind of a phase approach within our 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 bank. I was saying that. Uh, in not just a single algorithm to do to do the the approval. Yeah, I think in Hong Kong also also is a kind of a learning curve or uh, have to you know um, scheduling with the existing or in parallel to 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 see the performance of the the, the algorithm before they really in production. Oh, I I know that okay you do it as a scheduling process in in let's say there's some manual process right now. Uh, is do do you have any figures to show how how effect how the effectiveness at this moment? Yeah, let's say you use less the manpower to do something, blah blah blah. Oh, actually, I, I was saying that we we we, we as the performance, you see, we are yeah. talking about one minute to 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 do the 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 the, the actual fund to the uh, end user as fast as one minute. So actually, bypass all the uh the many process are quite automated mm -hmm. but with, with this automated approach uh at the beginning we do a lot of you know uh ekyc a lot of uh, uh profiling of the user before they apply the loan we actually have a kind of a, a portrait of the applicant <laughs> so with that leverage actually a lot of uh uh, uh alternate data uh we're talking about as a presentation i was saying that we acquire Free attribute from the alternate data, but actually in our production, quite thousand or ten of thousand of alternate data <laughs> attribute that we leverage to to have a you know uh uh the, to to do the profiling or the algorithm. So so that's why it's uh, quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think What's... that yeah the time is almost up. Yeah, I think it's it's a good sharing to all of us to know more about the how to use the federated learning in the banking industry. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, okay. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.